Welcome back everybody. We're going to talk about how to build new representations out of old ones. And we're going to show that by using the different methods we come up with to create new representations out of old ones, that we can generate the category of all representations, every object in that category up to isomorphism, starting with just one faithful representation. One obvious method is to look for sub-representations, or equivalently, sub-co-modules. Along with sub-representations, we can have quotients, where we quotient out by given sub-representation. These are the two basic instructions. A third thing that we can do is do direct sums. So I'll just establish a notation here. G is an affine group scheme. And let's let A be the associated coordinate ring. So to construct a direct sum, I'm taking two co-modules of A, and I'm going to define a co-module structure on V tens uh, V direct sum V twiddle by just using rho plus U twiddle, which in particular is a map to V tensored over K with A. Uh, direct sum with v twiddle tensored over k with a, and I realize here that I've bit a, I've made a bit of a uh, error in the using this twiddle notation because we were using that for something else last time. So let's use maybe uh, v prime instead, v prime, just to try to make things a little bit uh, more consistent. But then I can use the fact that this is isomorphic to v tensor v twiddle. Let's go v direct sum v twiddle tensored over k with a. So this is also going to be a co-module structure. So in particular, our direct sum is v direct sum v twiddle with the induced map from rho direct sum rho, rho prime. As an abusive notation, we'll just write that as rho direct sum rho prime and just take that isomorphism as sort of the obvious thing in the end. Everything so far has just used the fact that A is a co-algebra in order to define these sub-representations or sub-co-modules. But we actually know that A is a Hopf algebra, so in particular A has an algebra structure and A has an antipode map corresponding to inverse. Using that, we can construct two new ways of making representations. The first is via tensor product. So if I've got two co-modules, I can take their tensor product, and this defines a map, natural sort of obvious map, given by rho tensored with rho prime, into V tensored with K over A, tensored with V, tensored, v prime tensored over K with A, which is naturally isomorphic to V tensored over K with V prime tensored over K with A tensored over K with A. And then because A has an algebra structure, it has a multiplication map. We'll denote that by M. And the identity tensored with M defines a map then going with V tensored over V prime over K with V prime to A. And this composition defines an A module structure on, or sorry, uh, an A co module structure on V tensored with V prime. So the tensor product is V tensored with V prime, with the co module structured by, uh, induced by the composition of the identity tensored with M composed with rho tensored with rho prime. And again, I'm taking that isomorphism there, the, the natural one to sort of just be implicit. So this is used the fact that A is a bi-algebra, it has an algebra and a co-algebra structure. And the last way that we can generate a new representation from an old one is by taking the dual, and this is going to use the antipode map. So given a co-module of A, the dual defines an A module, excuse me, an A dual module, 
And if I post compose this with the antipode map, actually scratch that. We need to take V to be finite dimensional. Over K. And in this case, we have canonical isomorphisms from hom of V into V tensored over K with A into hom over K of V tensored with V dual into A. And then again to hom from V dual into A tensored over K with V dual. And this sends our structure map encoding the co-module structure to some map rho prime such that if rho was defining some sort of right coaction, rho prime is defining a left coaction. Now using rho prime along with the obvious map going from A tensored with V dual to V dual tensored with A and post composing that with the antipode map we obtain a new co-module structure uh, one on V dual so the co-module structure on V dual is exactly the composition of the identity tensored with S and rho prime. We're here in implicitly again I'm observing this isomorphism. Now for any co-algebra C with co-module V, C is defined again over K, we define C sub V to be the smallest subspace of C with rho of V contained in V tensor C. Note that automatically C sub V is going to be a sub coalgebra of C. And let's take K to be a field. And let's let EI be a basis for V. And just write that EI then is a sum over J of EJ tensored with AJI for some AJIs inside of C reminiscent of our expressions when we're looking at embeddings of affine group schemes into matrix algebras. And in this case, if I put this data together, then CV is going to be the span of the AIJs. Let's say that there's N of them to span from. The AIJs as I and J range between 1 and N. And as a consequence of this, C sub the direct sum of several representations will be equal to C sub V1 plus C sub V2 all the way through C sub Vn. Another consequence is that the tensor product of two representations will have a subcoalgebra corresponding to the product. But this only makes sense when C actually has a bialgebra structure. So let's let C be A. And we can write that this is the same thing as this. Let's try to prove that. To start out, let's choose bases for V and V prime. And let's go ahead and define AIJ and AIJ prime in the obvious way. First by letting rho sub EI be the sum of J's of A sub IJ tensored with excuse me, E sub J tensored with A sub IJ and rho sub EI prime. But let's do rho prime for V prime. We'll let that be the sum over J of E sub J prime tensored with a sub j i prime. Then the the structure uh, on the tensor product co-module is given by the composition of M and the identity map on V tensor V prime composed with the tensor product of the rows. Which in particular sends a basis element to the sum of simple tensors EK tensor EL tensored with the product AKI 
a l j prime. So what this shows is that a sub v is the span of the a i j's. a v prime is the span of the a i j primes. And then a v tensored with v prime is the span of the products. So in particular, we get that a v tensor v prime is equal to a v times a v prime. So that proves that proposition. Using a similar sort of argument, we can show that if a is a Hopf algebra, so it has an antipode map, then the sub coalgebra associated to the dual module, uh, sorry, the dual co-module, is going to be nicely related to the original sub coalgebra. For this, I need b to be finite dimensional, and of course, a is a Hopf algebra. And in this case, a sub v dual is the image of a sub v under the antipode map. To prove this, let's start by remembering our construction of the co-module structure on the dual. This had to do with canonical isomorphisms and homomorphisms from v to v tensor a into homomorphisms from v tensor v dual into a, as well as another canonical isomorphism from v dual into a tensor over k with v dual into the homomorphism ring of v tensor over k with v dual into a. These maps are constructed by sending a map rho to the map which sends a simple tensor, v tensor chi, to nabla composed with chi tensor the identity on A, composed with rho. The map on the right is defined similarly, where here f of v, or f sub v, is the map which goes from v dual into k by sending a chi to chi of v. In other words, the map going from v to sending v to f sub v is the typical embedding of v into the double dual of v. Since v is finite dimensional, dimension counts imply that this map and this map are both isomorphisms. And in particular, if we use the typical notation that rho sends a basis element ei to the sum over j's of ej tensor with aji, then if we also adopt the canonical basis for v dual consisting of chi i's, i equals 1 to n, where chi i of ej is just delta i j, then under this identity above, we're sending rho to the map, which sends a basis element, ei tensored chi j, to the sum over k of chi j of ej times aji, I'm sorry, chi j times, uh, of e, ek times aki, but this is just going to give us a single term, so this is just giving us aji. And this is exactly what rho prime is sent to. If rho prime is the map which sends that basis element chi j to the sum over j, over i of aji's tensored with chi i. And the co-module structure on v dual is it exactly real prime composed with the antipode map in a nice way. In particular, it sends chi j to the sum over i's of the antipode s. I should really be using here a capital S of aji tensored with chi i. So this can be thought of as a transposition and an inversion. In particular, it follows automatically that A sub V dual is generated by the span 
of s of ajis, which is exactly s of a sub v. So that proves the proposition. Let's think a little bit more about a sub v. So far, given v, which is some sort of a co-module, we defined a sub v, which is a sub-co-algebra of a. But a here has a hopped algebra structure, and one idea that might be particularly nice is to try to figure out how to expand a sub v into, say, a sub bi algebra, or even better, a sub hop algebra. That means what I want to do here is I want to add a whole bunch of different products, the base field to make sure that we include the identity, along with a sub v, which is our generating set, along with a sub v times a sub v, so that we have products of pairs of elements, but then we need products with products of pairs, so I need to add a sub v times a sub v times a sub v, and so on. And this is just defining for us an algebra, which is a sub-algebra of A, which contains the sub-co-algebra A sub V. And what we can actually show is that this is going to be a sub-co-algebra itself. So this seems kind of important. Let's give this a definition. I'm going to define A of V to be equal to this sum. And one thing that will probably give most of the proof away is that I can notice that this is the sum of k plus a sub v plus a sub v tensor v plus a sub v tensor v tensor v and so on. So our proposition is that a sub v our a of v is a is the smallest sub algebra of a containing a sub v, and the smallest part is pretty trivial here because it's clearly the smallest sub algebra containing a sub v. So all we need to show is that this actually has a bi-algebra structure. And it clearly has an algebra structure because I've de de designed it specifically to have products and sums. So what I really need to do, do is show that it actually has a co-algebra structure. And then we'll be done. Now, as I mentioned above, A of V is K plus A V plus A V cross V plus A V cross V cross V plus and so on. And I can write this as A K plus V plus V cross V plus A of V cross V cross V plus and so on. And in this way here, we can see that A of V is the union of, over N of A sub VN, where V sub N is K plus V plus V tensor V plus yada yada all the way through v tensor product n times. And each of these a sub v n's is a co-algebra by definition. So a sub v is this union of this increasing set of co-algebra and will therefore have a co-algebra structure. That completes the proof. Now what if I wanted to look at a sub hop algebra that I could associate to my v? 
In other words, I want to think about the smallest sub-hop algebra of A, which contains A sub V. And to do that, I'm just going to also include V dual. So A of V plus V dual is the smallest sub-hop algebra of A containing A sub V. And to prove this, just note that any sub-hop algebra which contains A sub V will also contain S of A sub V, which is A sub V dual. And the smallest subalgebra containing A sub V and A sub V dual is A sub V plus V dual. Or that's not quite right, but let me let me put it a different way. So it'll also contain A sub V plus A sub V dual, their span, which is the same thing as A sub V directs on V dual. So I'm looking for a subalgebra of A, which contains V plus V dual, and the largest subalgebra, or the smallest subalgebra, doing so. So that's just the smallest subalgebra. So if I prove it's a Hopf algebra, it has to be the smallest Hopf algebra also. But it's already a bi-algebra. In fact, I can say that right here. It's the smallest sub-bi-algebra. Sub-bi-algebra containing that. So I just need to prove that it has a Hopf algebra structure. But it's already quite clear that it's closed under the antipodic map. So right away, it has to be a sub hopf algebra. So, so far, to any co-module V of our Hopf algebra A, I've been able to represent a sub co uh, associate a sub co-algebra, a sub bi-algebra, and a sub hopf algebra by making it slightly larger and slightly larger. For the rest of this, I'm going to let my affine group scheme in the background be an algebraic group over my base field, so in particular the coordinate ring is finally generated. And what we can show is that the representation associated to a co an A co-module is going to be faithful if and only if the sub Hopf algebra that we associate to it is just the original Hopf algebra. So let's try to prove this. To prove this, let's remember our standard notation. EI is going to be a basis for V. And we're going to let rho of EI be the sum over J's of EJ tensored with AJI, where my AJI's are an A. Then the representation is faithful if and only if the induced map going from G to GLV is a closed embedding, which is true if and only if the map on coordinate rings is surjective. But this map here is exactly the map which sends polynomial ring in n squared plus 1 many variables with one relation into A by sending xij to aij. So in particular, we end up with the image being surjective if and only if the aij's generate as an algebra. But if they generate A as an algebra, since they also span A sub V, that means that A sub V generates A as an algebra. In fact, the image itself is a sub hop algebra of A, which is generated by the A sub V's. So this is the same thing as saying that A sub V 
Rexon v dual is the same as a. Now one interesting thing to do is to compare co-modules of some a sub b with co-modules of a. And one result we get right away is that if V is a finite dimensional A co-module and W is a finite dimensional AV co-module, then for some n, W is going to be isomorphic to a, a quotient of a sub sub module of n, a direct sum of n copies of v. To prove this, without loss of generality, we can replace c with c v, excuse me, a with a v. And what I want to remember is that there's a nice correspondence between co-modules of a and modules of a dual. And under this correspondence, our statement translates to just showing that W dual is going to be a quotient of a submodule of V dual N for some N. And I know that W dual is a quotient of A dual N for some N. So all I really need to show is that A dual itself is a submodule of V dual to the N for some N. But an appropriate embedding here just comes from taking a spanning set for V and sanding A to the sum over I of A times, excuse me, A times E1 through a times E n, which is in n copies of V. And I'm missing some dual symbols here. Put those in. And since A is A sub V, V will be faithful, so this will have to be embedded. Now at long last I can prove my theorem, which says that if V is a representation of G corresponding to a co-module V rho, then V, and if V is faithful, then every representation, which is finite dimensional, is a quotient of a sub-representation of some tensor product of V direct sum V dual. To prove this, let's just let W be that tensor product, so that in particular, A of V direct sum V dual will be equal to A sub W, and since V is faithful, this is the same thing as A, and by the previous proposition, I know that every finite dimensional a co-module is going to be a quotient of a sub-co-module of the tensor product over n of v with v dual. So this shows in particular that using those operations of direct sum, tensor product, and dual, and also sub taking sub-representations and taking quotients, starting with a faithful representation, I can generate up to isomorphism every sort of finite dimensional representation inside my category. And that's a good place to stop for the day. So I'll see you guys next time.